Tilly Edinger's greatest academic accomplishment was creating the field of paleoneurology, or the study of fossilized brains. She had a very challenging and interesting journey into becoming a scientist, and I've made a whole separate video about that. But in this video, we're going to talk about her research. And how do you study something that is hidden? Fossils are evidence of past life usually preserved in rock. The kinds of things that get fossilized are usually hard things like bones, shells, teeth, wood, exoskeletons, but brains, brains are squishy. So how is Tilly going to study fossilized brains if brains are rarely fossilized? Well, skulls, which hold the brain, are hard. They do leave a fossil record. And the inside of the skulls have a secret. The brain that was once there can leave an imprint of itself inside the skull. So if Tilly could just study the inside of a skull, she might be able to get information about the brain. But how is she going to study inside of a skull? Ooh, we smash it open! What? No! What? We smash it open to see the inside of the skull! We can't smash it open. It's a, it's a fossil. It's a precious thing. It's a, that's a horrible idea. I thought it was a good idea. Tilly was faced with this conundrum. How is she going to study the inside of the skull without destroying it? And her solution was to create rubber endocasts. But what's an endocast? And even further, what's a cast? Now, there are a few different ways that something can leave a fossil record, and two of the most common are molds and casts. Molds are the imprint living things can leave on the earth. So if I put a shell into some mud or maybe into this putty, when I pull it away, there's an imprint. And that imprint is a mold. It's a record of what was once there. But let's say that we filled that imprint, that mold, up with sediment, or in this case, chocolate. What's left is a cast. The remains of a fossilized critter can dissolve and be filled with new minerals. And the cast is the same shape and size as the thing that lived. It's like a replica, not just an imprint. And so those are the two main types of fossils, casts and molds. Now back to Tilly and her fossilized brains. We can think of the inside of the skull as a mold for the brain. It's an imprint that the brain has left inside the skull. So if she could just fill up that mold, she could have a cast of the brain, something solid in the same shape that she could study. Any kind of cast of a hollow shape is called an endocast. It doesn't just have to be a brain inside a skull. It could be the inside of a hollow shell, for example. And endocasts do occur in nature, but it is a lot more rare. So in order to make her own endocast, Tilly would use rubber. Rubber is flexible, so she would seal up a skull except for one hole and pour some rubber in. Once the rubber has set, she could pull it out like a popped balloon and then reinflate it so that it would take the same shape that it had when it was inside the skull. Now she would have something that she could hold, that she could look at, that was the same shape as the brain that was once there. Before Tilly, people didn't think that the inside of skulls were useful. They didn't realize that endocasts could give them new and interesting information about the evolution of brains. That was all Tilly. Tilly studied fossilized horse brains. The horses that we know today evolved over millions of years, and their ancestors were a lot smaller than the ones we know. Tilly would look at their brains and how they changed over time. Some scientists thought maybe as the brain got bigger, it also got more wrinkly across all species. Tilly really argued that the way that brains evolve is different species to species, that there isn't a hard, fast rule for brain evolution. And she was really respected because she was able to argue and stand by her ideas. She also was a mentor to a lot of people who were entering the field. Tilly's research and ideas are still really respected and useful today. Because of her, the field of paleoneurology is alive and well. They no longer make rubber casts so much, but they will use x-rays and CT scans, which is even safer for the skulls, to get an idea of what the brains might have looked like. So all of that research, all of the paleoneurology that we know, owes its start to Tilly Edinger.